Yesterday we got our very first look at Phyrexia All Will Be One, and today we are going to go through the new cards that got spoiled. Let's jump into it. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. In lieu of some gameplay today, I thought it would be a really good idea to go through some of the new cards that got spoiled yesterday on Weekly MTG for Phyrexia All Will Be One. Now we're gonna go through and actually read what each card does, talk a little bit about it, and I'll just give you my opinions on each card. I will go ahead and say, just as a first look, I am very excited for this set. Phyrexia has always been a bit of a favorite of mine, a bit of a soft spot. I've actually collected a lot of the original set. Uh, and so this is really just right in line with the kinds of things that I I like to do in magic and I'm really excited to see where it goes. So before we jump in really quick, if you don't mind, just hit subscribe on that button down below. That would really help us out a lot. And don't forget, share your opinions down below. I would love to see what you guys think. This is a community. This is a group. I want to talk about it. So let me know what you guys think of each of these cards down below. First up, we are starting strong with Elish Norn, Mother of Machines. This all new version of one of my favorite creatures in the game is four and a white for a four seven legendary creature Phyrexian Praetor with vigilance and if a permanent entering the battlefield causes a triggered ability of a permanent you controlled to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. Additionally, permanents entering the battlefield don't cause abilities of permanents your opponents control to trigger. This very much continues a bit of a theme that we have seen with some of the new Praetors that we've gotten in the last handful of sets which is obviously that it really helps your game plan out and really locks down the opponent's game plan depending on of course what they're playing. If they have any kind of ETB effects that is going to get hindered by this Elish Norn which is obviously huge and naturally you are going to want to build around this. One of the examples used in weekly MTG was to play Moldrifter and actually draw four cards instead of just two. That's a pretty powerful ability. I definitely anticipate some really powerful decks built around Elish Norn and a lot of ETB effects, not just in standard, but of course in other formats as well. Seems like a really good home for this would be Commander, of course, because you can do and build around this effect quite heavily. And of course, you just kind of naturally shut down a lot of what the opponents might be doing, just kind of inherently with that passive ability. I would also just like to point out that for five mana, you are getting a four seven with Vigilance, which is pretty powerful. I know that the power level as four is not necessarily as strong as maybe you would like, but that big butt with seven and vigilance means that you will be able to find time to attack in and be able to effectively block a lot of the other five mana threats that I anticipate at least being in standard during this time. All in all guys, I really do think this new Elish Norn is gonna make some big waves in standard, commander, and probably a handful of other places. A wonderful card, a beautiful card nonetheless as well. And again, just really excited to have Elish Norn back. Moving on to our next card, we have Blue Sun's Twilight, which is X and two blue for a sorcery. Gain control of target creature with mana value X or less. If five is X or more, create a token that's a copy of that creature. This card features some amazing artwork with Jenga Taxis really being featured, almost holding that blue sun, which is really awesome. Additionally, this is a really cool arc back to the Zenith cycle of blue sun Zenith, green sun Zenith, etc. And I really like that we're getting kind of a new form of that same cycle. To me, this feels like a fantastic control finisher, being able to steal the opponent's creature, potentially make a copy of it, and basically hopefully leave them with nothing, really is a, a great way to finish off a game. The only real downside I can see to this card is the fact that it's sorcery speed and not instant speed. I think if it were instant speed, it would obviously be way too powerful. Being able to surprise block with their own creature, something along those lines, doesn't seem like a great idea in terms of power level, but I do think this card will make some waves, at least in standard control. And then of course in other formats as well, commander, things like that, I do think we will expect to see this. I think it's a pretty strong card. I don't think it's amazing, but it's very, very good. Moving into our next card, we actually have our first reprint that we have seen, which is Phyrexian Obliterator. Phyrexian Obliterator is four black mana for a Phyrexian Horror with Trample, and whenever a source deals damage to Phyrexian Obliterator, that source's controller sacrifices that many permanents. It is also a 5-5. 
Phyrexian Obliterator was originally printed in New Phyrexia and ever since then has been making waves in a lot of different formats and for very good reason. While that mana cost of four black mana is a little bit tricky, it is still a four mana 5-5 five five with trample and a very powerful ability that allows you to force the opponent into sacrificing their own permanence. Too often this card gets played and if the opponent doesn't have a way to actually deal with it, chances are you're going to be able to win the game solely because there's really not much they could do about it. Essentially, in the best possible scenario for the opponents, what they are going to have to do is A, either remove it, B, block it and hope to kill it, which in that case does force them to sacrifice permanence because the Phyrexian Obliterator is obviously taking damage, or C, just take five damage and hope for the best. Because this gets played so far ahead of the curve, Mono Black is going to get even more of a push than we are currently seeing in Standard right now. Keep in mind that cards like Invoke Despair already have that four black mana restriction, which does make this really, really heavily focused on just Mono Black between Phyrexian Obliterator and Invoke Despair, I really think this is going to put Mono Black over the edge even more. Obviously, this does hit other formats. We have seen it in other formats for quite some time, so I'm not really going to talk about those, but I do think this is a really strong addition to standard for the black decks out there. Finally, we have our first Planeswalker, which is Koth, Fire of Resistance. Now, Koth is two and two red for a legendary Planeswalker, beginning at four loyalty. The abilities are as follows. You can plus two to search your library for a basic mountain card, reveal it, put it into your hand, and then shuffle your deck. You can minus three, and Koth deals damage to target creature equal to the number of mountains you control. Or for the full minus seven, you get an emblem with, whenever a mountain enters the battlefield under your control, this emblem deals four damage to any target. A couple of things that I like to do when evaluating Planeswalker walkers just right off the bat is look at the mana cost versus the loyalty counters starting on the planeswalker card. Now Koth is four mana and begins with four loyalty. You can use both of the first two abilities right off the bat which to me signifies just a strong start to a good strong planeswalker. Now looking at that first ability that's an okay one right? It's not necessarily amazing but for a mono red deck that could actually be really powerful because what that means is you may not have to have as many lands in your opening hand as you maybe otherwise would think. Moving into that minus three ability, obviously a pretty good one, right? You get to deal damage to target creature equal to the number of mountains you control. That's a fairly strong ability and it protects Koth just inherently by getting a threat off of the board. I think most often we'll probably see Koth just come down in minus three immediately to get some threats off of the battlefield. I think that's actually a really powerful ability. And then finally, that minus seven is really, really strong and definitely a game ending play. Now, again, looking at standard, I'm really focusing more on mono red. However, I do think this actually has legs more so in control lists where you can actually pull lands from your deck, hopefully deal with creatures on the battlefield and set up a win condition all on one card. To me, I feel like that's the better home for Koth. I don't know that Mono Red is really the best place for it, but I do really think either way, Koth is a very powerful Planeswalker. Now, outside of Standard, I actually think this has potentially even more value because of that minus seven emblem. Being able to hit them for four damage every single time a mountain comes into play is huge, and especially in a deck like Valakut or something trying to get a lot of mountains onto the battlefield at once, there's certainly a world where you can make that happen and just one shot your opponent. Jumping back very quickly, one last thing about that minus three and really the only major downside about it is that it does only hit creatures. I think that's probably okay because again, it's really just there to protect Koth more so than anything else, but it doesn't hit planeswalkers, it doesn't hit opponents, which just means that, you know, you might be incentivized to plus up versus minusing down depending on the board state at any given time. Moving into what is, I think, a very iconic little card, we have Slowbad Iron Goblin. This is two and a red for a 3-3 legendary creature Phyrexian Goblin Artificer, a heck of a type line. The ability states, tap it and sacrifice an artifact, add an amount of red mana equal to the sacrificed artifact's mana value. Spend this mana only to cast artifact spells or activate abilities of artifacts. First and foremost, if you don't know, Slowbad is actually a pretty important character in the original Mirrodin novels. It's actually pretty cool to see him replayed here because he's gone through so much of a story change. I haven't actually read the new Phyrexian novels yet and that story, so I'm really intrigued to see where that took him. But to see him changed into a Phyrexian and completed in that way is really interesting. 
As far as how good Slow Bad is, it's very dependent on the deck and the build around cards that you're gonna be using with it. Obviously you are looking to build an artifact sub theme, but I could see a standard deck at least where you play something like Arms Race, get a really powerful artifact onto the battlefield with the Arms Race ability, sacrifice it after attacking with it with the Slow Bad Iron Goblin, and then theoretically being able to play quite a bit off of the mana that you generated that way. That definitely seems convoluted and a little bit ambitious, but I do think it would be a really fun card and that combo seems to be actually pretty reasonable to do given that it's not the most mana intensive combo in the world. That being said, I'm gonna hold a lot of my opinion on this card until we see the rest of the Phyrexia all will be one set because we need to see what kinds of artifacts we're gonna be getting in the set. I do think obviously we can expect a fairly high volume and so I'm excited to see what we can do and hopefully we can get some really powerful plays out of this. One last thing, I will suggest that in formats like Commander and things like that, it kind of goes without saying that this will probably be a pretty reasonable combo piece and maybe even a Commander, I don't know. I don't play a lot of Commander so I'm evaluating based on gut feeling on that, so I apologize if that's just completely wrong, but I do think you could probably get something out of this. Finally, we have our last card that we are gonna be going over today, which is Jor Kadeen, First Gold Warden. Now this is the only multicolor card that we have had so far, but it is red and a white for a 2-2 legendary creature, Human Rebel. Jorkadine does have Trample, and whenever it attacks, it gets plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the number of equipped creatures you control. Then, if Jorkadine's power is 4 or greater, you actually get to draw a card as well. I think it's pretty safe to assume that Boros Equipment might be a very powerful deck, especially with this at the helm. This really does everything you want for an aggressive Boros Equipment build. It not only takes advantage of the fact that you just have equipped creatures, it gets stronger, it already Already has trample built in and it draws you cards if you meet that four or greater threshold for its power. One of the biggest downfalls of these kinds of decks is very often that they just don't draw enough cards, but this certainly fixes that problem along with some of the other equipments that we already have in standard right now. So I'm very curious to see what other equipments we get out of this set because I do think that really is gonna take this over the top. Again, it goes without saying, I'm fairly certain this will see some play in commander, if not a lot of play in commander. This might be a very good Boros commander in itself. I have no idea, I don't play a lot. So I am really excited to see where this lands elsewhere, but I definitely think in standard, this will be at the helm of those Boros equipment decks without question. So guys, those are the brand new cards. Just a couple of closing thoughts on this before we wrap this video up. First and foremost, like I said at the top of the video, I am extraordinarily excited for this set. Phyrexia is a really exciting setting, in my opinion, and obviously this is all coming to a helm now, and so I'm really excited to see where the story goes with Elishnorn really being the feature card of the set is, ah, it's just one of my favorite things. Now, a couple things I didn't go over in this are the oil slick foils, things like that. There are a lot of really cool features in this set. Some good, maybe some bad, some that you may not like, but I am really excited for the alternate arts of a lot of these, as well as just the Phyrexian text on some of these lands and some of these cards. There's so much to love about this. We'll talk more about those things later on, but I just wanted to get the initial review of some of the first few preview cards that we have seen out there, so you guys can hopefully share in that communication as well. Guys, if you were excited for Phyrexia All Will Be One, please drop a like down below. Let me know your thoughts on these cards because again, I want this to be an open conversation. I want us to talk about it. Maybe I missed something or maybe you have a differing opinion. Share it down below. This is a great forum for that. We just want to talk about it, have a good time, and hopefully enjoy this new set and hopefully what is a step in the right direction uh, for, for the new sets in Magic. Guys, thank you so much. I really do appreciate you watching. Again, hit that subscribe button if you don't mind. It really would help out a lot. And hopefully we will see you guys tomorrow with some gameplay or maybe some more review videos. We'll talk about it then.